to me, the most important thing was, I don't know, seeing what the American voters wanted, just seeing like their faces in the crowd, seeing how they reacted to the candidate. That passion fuels my passion to cover it. My name is Keith Bedford, and I'm a news photographer who's been covering presidential politics for the past 22 months. When I went to Iowa, I wasn't on assignment for anyone. I had a good relationship with the New York Times and with Reuters before I went. I left without any guarantee of like, you'll have this amount of work, so you'll be okay. It's a little bit stressful, but at the same time, it's a little bit intoxicating. I photographed his announcement, and then we got on a plane and flew to Iowa. We're photographing all these crowds, and the crowds were huge there. This is like the very beginning. I met a man in the crowd who said, who was talking to me, he's like, so, what do you think? It's like, this is amazing, right? This is amazing, right? It's like, I got my kids out of bed, because I haven't heard a speech like this since Bobby Kennedy. I'm looking at the crowd, and I'm looking at all these hands reaching out to shake hands with him, and I'm like, wow, I've got to get that Bobby Kennedy moment, and I'm trying to make this picture, make this picture, make this picture, and it doesn't ever quite happen, because it's like I had a preconceived idea in my mind, and I've got a few nice pictures of the hands in the crowd, and it just never quite worked out for me. You hear all these stories of the media drinking the Kool-Aid of the Obama campaign, but I think we drink the Kool-Aid on any story. It's like, I choose to cover this person because, well, he's a little more interesting than that person. And in some cases, his campaign was a little more interesting than other campaigns. But I wasn't convinced that he was going to be the one to come out on top. I tried to keep an objective idea on the whole story, but at the same time, you sort of thought, maybe in the back of your head, that like, this would be really good if this happened. So I was in Austin, and I've been looking for this Bobby Kennedy moment, but I'd sort of put it out of my head at this point, and he comes out on stage, and I swear, like, before he came out on stage, it was raining. And as soon as, like, it, he was five minutes away, the rain stopped. They went up the stage and they wiped the stage down and then five minutes later it was like Obama comes out and there's like scores of people along the edge of the stage and he's walking along the stage and he's shaking hands with everyone as he's walking along, walking along. And he reaches out into the direction I'm in and I'm focused on like a group of people reaching out. It's just all these hands reaching up to shake hands with him. I looked at the back of the camera and I knew that that was the picture I'd been looking for. It sort of jumped out at me right away. My grandfather remembers a time where it was difficult to vote. He's 92 years old and to this day still puts on a shirt and tie to go vote. I'm motivated a lot by like what my grandparents went through. I'm motivated by the fact that they were small African-American farmers that managed to like start a business, raise five kids. They gave me a lot of opportunities. Here I am on election night, and I'm on the phone with my grandfather, and he's like, are you there? Are you there? It's like, can you believe this? It's like, boy, that must be something else. I'm so glad you're there. I'm so glad you're there. I mean, the whole first African-American president thing is like, it's a big page turner. And on election night, I'm standing in a crowd with all these other photographers and I realize this is the single most important assignment I've ever covered.